Hi ladies, and welcome to this interview with Christina Mendez, who is the CEO of a wonderful company called The Casery. And you guys are really going to enjoy this interview. Christina, why don't you take a few minutes uh, to introduce yourself to the girls and tell them a little bit about what you do. Yeah, hey everyone. So I'm Christina, I'm CEO of The Casery. It's a really fun fashion tech accessory company. We do little items like these. So iPhone cases, as well as like pockets, rings. And then we recently expanded into it. laptop bags, handbags, AirPods cases, Apple watch bands. So all kinds of fun accessories and they're really cute and fashionable. So you should definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm CEO there. And what that means is I oversee pretty much everything. So that would be financial stuff, making sure we have enough money in the bank to keep operating, as well as new product design like developing and designing new products, hiring, sales and marketing, making sure that orders are being shipped on time and everything is running smoothly, customer service, um, a little bit of everything. We have a, tw a team of 12 employees, but you know, at, as CEO, you always gotta make sure that everything is getting done and also anywhere that I can help out because sometimes things get busy. So just have to be willing to help out in any capacity that is needed. That is a lot of stuff to be in charge of. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's really, uh, I think it's really important too that you brought up the fact that like as CEO, that part of your responsibility is helping out when you need to. I think a lot of times people think that a CEO is somebody who's standing there and like pointing and telling everybody else what to do, but sometimes you got to pitch in too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, really you have to be the expert of everything. I mean, and literally everything. So there have been times where I've been packing orders myself. There have been times where people have sent a, a request for customer service on the on the website saying, hey, I didn't I haven't seen my order ship yet. And I will literally sometimes be the person um, making that response because it's the weekend and our customer service team doesn't work over the weekend, but I want to be able to respond to customers or, or really anything. So, you know, title doesn't really mean much. It's about servicing the customers and making sure people like the product and really doing whatever it takes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question and I hope that, um, I hope that it doesn't throw you off or, or, uh, or anything, but, um, so a question that I have is like CEO. I, I think that a lot of times when um, people picture a CEO, they picture somebody who is, um, who is older. And I think it's really cool that um, you're, you're younger and you're CEO, but how does that, how did that come about? Yeah, well, first I'd say I'm older than I look. <laughs> I'm in my mid thirties and I guess I'll give you a brief overview of what my career looked like. So I started out, um, I went to Stanford for undergrad. I start, I uh, majored in economics, which Stanford doesn't uh, offer business. So kind of closest thing to business was economics. From there, I moved to New York City and I worked at Goldman Sachs, which is one of the biggest investment banks in the world. Um, so I actually worked there for five years as a risk manager. And as part of my role there, I oversaw lending, but I also kind of made my way into a technology role. We had, um, we worked really closely with the technology team and me being one of the younger members of the team, I was really excited to, to work with technology. So any chance I got to help with product development or testing out new technological products, I really got into that. Um, and that kind of really helped me throughout my whole career, just having a knowledge of technology. Um, yeah, and then from there, I went to Harvard Business School, kind of took a weird detour, and then ran a 500-room hotel in Miami Beach. M yeah, <laughs> moved back to LA, worked at a hedge fund for a couple years in a technology role again there, and then worked at an ad ag agency in Los Angeles doing video advertising. So anytime you're streaming, watching, I, I watch a lot of Bravo, but if you watch um, any other like Hulu or whatever, if you get advertisements, it's probably being run through this one ad agency in LA. And then from there, I came across this opportunity to be CEO of the Casery. So all those varied experiences, um, again, technology being the backbone of pretty much any company in today's world um, was really helpful. But, you know, having operated a 500 room hotel and overseen so many different functions there, having a background in finance, um, and then even with the ad agency, understanding marketing, all of those different pieces gave me you know, skills and experience and all the things that lead up to being a CEO. So it is definitely a bit more of a compressed timeline than most people, but, um, but, I, but I've had a more experience than you might think. Yeah, that's a lot of experience in a lot of different areas. So, I mean, is that, um, 
for someone who's maybe looking at being, um, you know, growing into that position of being a CEO, is that uh, kind of like your advice that you would uh, suggest that they have a wide range of experience like that? Or is that just your personal experience? That was my personal experience. It definitely depends on what you want to do. Some of the advice I was given in business school, which I think makes a lot of sense, is um, with your career, you know, again, if you're looking for this sort of leadership role, it helps to start out broad and then go really narrow and then go broad again. So, um, you know, I started out in finance, but I always had this lean for technology. Um, I actually kind of missed the going narrow part. So I don't know that, you know, you'll want to make that decision for yourself. But um, yeah, and then going broad again would be if you're a CEO or any sort of leadership role, you're automatically going to be in a broad role again. Um, so definitely both paths work. You could start narrow and then go broad or start broad and narrow, but it's at some point you want to give both a try somewhat. And has this always been something that has been a goal for you is to be the CEO of a company or was that something that just kind of fell into your lap or whatever? It wasn't always my goal, but it became my goal. Um, I sort of had this light bulb moment one day when I was working in my first job in finance, and it was towards the end of my five years there. We were working on developing a new product alongside with the technology team, and there were several of my colleagues on the phone with me, and we were trying to figure this out, and I noticed that none of my other uh, colleagues really wanted to make any decisions. I was the only one that was willing to make the decisions. And the reason for that is when you make a decision, you also have to deal with the consequences. So if you make the right decision, okay, great. You're kind of just doing your job. If you make the wrong decision, maybe you get in trouble, who knows? So um, a lot of people don't necessarily love making decisions and dealing with consequences. And that's understandable. I totally get that. But I, for whatever reason, I'm totally fine with making decisions. I'm happy to deal with the consequences. And so that's when I had this light bulb mo moment that was like, I should be in a leadership role. I like this responsibility. I like the challenge. I like the thrill of it. So that's when I kind of decided to really follow leadership path. I think you make a really good point that um, I think people don't mind making decisions until they start thinking about that whole like, well, if I make the wrong decision, then um, then what happens in having to deal with those consequences? So, I mean, I think that's a really good point, you know, to think about that um, and to take um, to take chances and to take those opportunities when leadership positions come around and get that um, get that practice of you know, making the wrong decisions and then how do you handle it? You yeah, know? absolutely. And I would say, even if you make a wrong decision, most decisions are reversible. Like you can pretty much always go back and change it. So I'd say the best thing is to keep an open mind. So be willing to take a stand, be willing to say, here's a decision. This is the path that we're going to do. But as you get more information, as new developments occur, be willing to reassess and then, and then you'll be fine. It'll be a learning opportunity. I love that learning opportunity. There's, uh, that's one of the, the things that um, I really try to, um, to stress is the fact that um, mistakes are just opportunities to learn something. And so it really is okay. I mean, you're going to make a mistake and to, to think that you're not going to make a mistake would be, I think, kind of silly, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, you're going to make tons of mistakes. And and it's true that mistakes are learning opportunities because, um, I mean, you have to learn. There's really no other way to do it. So you may as well just get it over with. <laughs> exactly. Um, so in your uh, capacity as CEO, um, what has been maybe the biggest thing that you've struggled with and then how have you handled it? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is again, like dealing with those consequences. And, um, I had a challenge where our sales team kind of left the organization for whatever reason. Again, we had shifts in management and a lot of things were going on. So there was a gap where we didn't really have a sales team. And um, to be honest, I didn't really step up and do the sales either because I don't love doing sales. And that had a much bigger impact than I would have ever realized. So I think, um, yeah, my biggest challenge was for sure not, uh, maybe not reacting fast enough. Maybe I could have hired someone more quickly, or maybe I could have stepped up and done sales myself. Um, but 
in any business that you go into, revenue and sales is really, really important. And again, another learning opportunity. Now that I've made that mistake once, I will never allow that to happen again. I, I now know that um, top line, which is a you know fancy way of saying your sales, is the most important thing. So again, it doesn't matter what role you're in, you always wanna make sure that sales are coming through the door. Absolutely, absolutely. Without sales, there, there is no company. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What has been um, the funnest or most rewarding part of your job? Yeah, so the most rewarding part is just um, seeing people using our products. So before lockdown, it would be the coolest thing to be out in the street and see someone using a phone case, specifically if it was one that I had a hand in designing or, or one of our new products. Um, we have a new product called the Crossbody Phone Pocket, and I actually sketched that out on a piece of paper in China. I sketched this out, and then several months later, it's now a patent pending product that people are using all over the all over the world, really. But you know, most the US um, but yeah it's just so exciting to come up with an idea and then have it turn into a reality and then take it a step further have it be something that someone's actually willing to pay for and that they really love using like it's it's a really crazy experience to think that you can create something out of literally nothing that is super cool to have uh, to have something that like an idea a thought that you had in your head and have it actually like come to life and actually be getting a patent on it and everything. Congratulations on that. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. And, and again, like it was literally on the back of a piece of paper in China and now it's a reality. So um, yeah, that, that's fun to see, to see an idea come to life. That's, uh, and I like, that's a fun story as well. Um, so how, uh, you know, like when you were in school and things like that and you were kind of maybe toying around with the idea of, you know, getting into leadership um, later on when you uh, were out in the workforce, how is being a CEO different than what you imagined it would be like? Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. Um, I think, you know, I listen to like a lot of podcasts or read a lot of articles from these founders and CEOs and, and they really make it sound glamorous and it sounds amazing and it can be at times. I mean, again, I just told that story of coming up with an idea and then having a product turn into reality. So there's some amazing perks, but it's also really, really challenging because if anything goes wrong, at the end of the day, it falls on my shoulders. And that's why I've packed orders myself or we go to a lot of trade shows. So I'm literally building the trade show booth myself. Um, I'm doing a lot of the sales personally, there's, you know, anything that can go wrong, it's, it falls on me. So it's, it's a lot of responsibility and it's a 24 seven job. You know, I don't really get to turn the phone off and say, whatever, it's the weekend. I'm not going to deal with it. It's no, you know, like you have to always be available, always responsible because, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be a reflection on how hard I worked or what my vision was. Um, so again, CEO can be a really fun role and you get that chance to have these ideas that come to life, but it's also a really big responsibility and it takes a lot of work. And it's, it's hard to find that team that's all going to come together. And when you do, there's no greater feeling, but it can be hard to find that team. Absolutely. There's a lot of reality there um, in your response because I mean, I, I really think that there is this um, I think maybe more so now than um, maybe even like five or 10 years ago, the whole glamour side of being a CEO and everything, and that's really emphasized, but not enough emphasis on the reality part of the position, which is decisions come down to you, whether they're right or they're wrong, decision comes down to you and you either get the reward or the consequence. And the fact that you're responsible for knowing how to do everything and should be able to chip in and build that, you know, trade show booth and everything. A lot of, a lot of times we, um, we gloss over the, the unfun part of being a CEO. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And also with entrepreneurship, especially for anyone interested in starting their own company, like you may not have income coming in for yourself personally for a while. And so you need to think about what that's going to look like. Um, in my situation, I had started out in fancy finance jobs in New York, making a really great salary, but then coming to be a CEO of a small uh, bootstrapped company, bootstrap meaning there was no outside funding, no one was giving us money. Uh, I actually took a huge pay cut, and I was willing to do that because it was a it was a challenge role, and I really learned a lot from it. But 
um, you know, there's times where I have to make difficult decisions. You know, am I going to cut my own pay so that I can afford to keep everyone else on payroll? Um, there, yeah, again, really difficult decisions. And the lifestyle is certainly not as glamorous as, as you might think reading other interviews or, or things like that. But again, it's depending on what motivates you. If, if, it, for me, it's really a joyous feeling to see people using the products and loving them and, and being uh, repeat customers, buying their third, fourth phone case, then it's all worth it. But, um, but I don't want to gloss over the fact that it's a lot of hard work. It can be very stressful. So um, you just have to, you know, think about if that's something you're really up for. Um, so because you said that, uh, you know, you, you've done so much now and, you're, and you've made it to CEO uh, of a company is... Is there, oh, well, not is there, are there more things that you're looking to do? What, what, so I guess I'm asking, what are some of your go future goals of where you see yourself being in the next like five or 10 years? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think what I do want probably is a uh, more peaceful kind of way of life. Like having a lot of responsibility is amazing and challenging, but um, there's also something to be said for not so challenging sometimes. Um, also, I think just my purpose is to be a leader. I love being a leader and I love inspiring other people. So I'm, I'm certain I'll be in some sort of a leadership role, but I'm not sure what that will look like. Um, but I really want to uh, really motivate other young women. I know when I was a young woman, I didn't really have a lot of professional role models that were women. And so um, I'd like for over the next five, 10 years to figure out how I can reach out to more young women and show them like, it's possible. You can be running a company. You can be a CEO in your thirties if you want. And if you don't want to do that, that's also great. You can really do whatever you want, um, but there's, there should be nothing stopping you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Christina, thank you so much uh, for this interview. Ladies, be sure that you scroll down below the video. We've got a little bit of a written portion of her interview as well for you to read. And then below that is the comment section. So you can leave questions and comments for Christina and she'll be sure to be able to come back and answer those questions for you. So thank you so much. We'll see you guys later. Thank you.